Let's talk about the drawing grids in visual analysis. When you first create a new project, you'll be given a grid in the xy plane at coordinate z equals zero. In order to manipulate the grid, we look to the project manager and see that there's a grid tab. Under the grid tab, we have the ability to shift the grid by changing its location. We can rotate the grid by changing its orientation. For example, if I change the z orientation to 45 degrees, we see we've rotated the grid 45 degrees. We can control what the spacing is in the grid points. Let's say we want x to be 1 and y to be 2. And lastly, we can control how many grid points there are if we want to shrink or expand our grid. Let's now look at some of the special grids that you can use in visual analysis. To get to those grids, we need to go to the Grid Manager tab again and click on the Edit List button. When I do that, the following dialog gives me a drop-down combination that shows the kind of grids that are currently available. The front view grid is what we were looking at and is the default. We can choose Polar, and if we do that, close, we'll see a Polar grid that we can draw from. Again, we can change its location, in other words, the center of the circle. We can rotate the grid and change the number of radial, radial elements we have, as well as if we want this grid to repeat in the Z direction coming out of the page. And then we can, contain, can control how many R points or radial points and Z points we use. Let's look at some of the other grids that are available. We look at the line grid, for example. Let's look at a line grid in the X direction. And if we close that, let's now shut off our polar grid and look at our line grid. A line grid is a very special grid that's simply just a line. And it has a center, and the line can be rotated. And then it has points along the line at two feet. It's kind of hard to see this, but if we look at drawing a member, we can drag our grid, our point along the line and see it snapping to the various grid points at two feet apart. Let's look at some other grids. Some of the more specialized grids happened are the ones near the end. Architectural grids are very common, so let's look at one of those. And again, we'll turn off the X grid and look at the architectural grid. The architectural grid looks like a regular rectangular grid, but the difference is the spacing between the grid lines can be changed. Let's suppose, for example, we want the first X segment to be 10 feet instead of 20 feet, and you see it's shortened it. And we can do the same and make each one different if we like. We can also change the number of grid points we have. Let's say in the Y direction we only have two. And we could change the Y spacing as well and make them different sizes. So we can create a very regular grid by using the architectural grid. And again, those come are available in a front, a side, and a top view. Let's look at the 3D grids. We create a grid with 3D grid lines. And I'll shut off the architectural grid and just look at the 3D grid line grid. Let's rotate a little bit. And to see that, we basically have a cube type grid set up. And the cube is able to be modified very similar to the architectural grid in that we can specify the number of segments in each direction as well as how what the spacing is between the grid lines in those directions. So this is basically a three-dimensional architectural grid. Let's now look at the rectangular grid in 3D. For the rectangular grid in 3D, it is basically an equal spaced grid in all directions. So all we can control are the spacing and the number of divisions. So, so it's not quite as flexible as that 3D architectural grid we were just looking at. The final grid we'll look at is the spherical grid. So let's add it to our project. Select the spherical grid and we'll turn off the rectangular grid and see that we have a sphere.
Now you might ask, what is the use of a grid? Well, the most common use of a grid is for drawing. So currently I'm drawing members, and if I wanted to draw a member around the perimeter of the architectural grid, I can zoom in a little bit, pick one of the grid points, and just drag my mouse around to the various points, and the member will snap to those points. So drawing grids are very useful for snapping. The final comment I'll make about a drawing grid is that once you're done with most of your drawing, I highly recommend you turn the grid off because at that point in time, your snapping will be forced to snap between nodes or, uh, or vertices and areas and so forth, and you may not want it to be snapping to grids. So very common when your drawing is done, turn the grid off and go from there.